All right, g'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel. In today's video, we're going to be taking a little bit of an early look at next year's season. I haven't quite got around to doing my ladder prediction for next year. I'm thinking I might leave that till after the draft, but in today's video, I'm sort of going to be using Tier Maker to sort of rank teams in terms of categories as a bit of a, a prequel or a prelude, if you will, to my actual ladder predictions. Still a bit of water to go under the bridge in terms of this season before I start looking too heavily at next season, but thought I'd use today's video to provide a bit of a snapshot as to how I see things going into next year. Still, obviously, the draft to come in about four weeks' time as well, which we'll be well and truly covering across the channel. We've also got to do all the rest of the season reviews that we started in, I think, September. But in the meantime, I just thought I'd whip up a quick tier maker to see how things are looking for the 2022 season. As always, guys, I do ask if you are enjoying the content, do please consider subscribing to the channel. Still, only about half of you who watch the videos have actually hit subscribe. So if you are enjoying it and want to see more, I'd appreciate it if you simply hit the red button button. Thank you. But without further ado here, let's get into this tier maker. So I've got four tiers in this, okay? I've got the top tier being the contenders, the teams that I generally can see winning the premiership, the outside chances, so one rung below that. Finals aspirants, so the teams that I think will either finish, you know, in the mix for finals or actually in the finals, but aren't necessarily a genuine chance for the premiership. And then below that, the teams that are rebuilding and not a realistic chance to play finals this year. As I always like to do with tier makers, I kind of go through the top and the bottom first, or at least go try and pick one from each category first so I can sort of see what my boundaries are. So the first one I'll talk about is the Melbourne Footy Club, who in my opinion are the clear premiership favourite for next year with their list profile the way it is. So many players in their prime. For me, it's very hard to imagine them not being up there again next year. I think they do start the year the team to beat. Obviously at the end of 2018 when they made that prelim with such a young side that has formed you know, a huge part of the team that would eventually win the premiership, we thought there was no way they were going to drop down the ladder in 2019 but obviously injuries got in the way so there's always a chance of that sort of thing happening again but I still think Melbourne are the number one team to beat. Start off with a rebuilding team. I still think I have North Melbourne in this group. Okay, So they've got a lot of good young talent in. They're going to add pick one this year which is likely to be Jason Horn Francis but I still think probably one more year of giving the kids the games before they actually realistically start to move up the ladder. Cut a bit of experience as well for the uh, for the second year running. Atley's gone, Dumont's gone, and Robbie Tarrant's made his way to Richmond. And of course, you know, young guys are going to come in and fill that spot. I do rate their youth, and I like the fact that they've added a young key forward in Coleman Jones to their list as well. But it's going to be about giving games to the young guys, and it's going to take patience. So an outside chance for the flag is a team that is probably not necessarily in my top group of contenders but I still think are likely to give it a shake. I'm actually going to say GWS here, okay? People are going to like that because I could see them sliding all the way to, you know, about 12th. But I just think there's a lot of untapped potential in that team. A lot of young talent as well. A lot of young guys that you sort of forget about because they've always had, you know, good access to the drafts, good access to picks. But the players in their prime are really, really good. So if they can overcome the hurdle of Toby Green not being available for the first five weeks of the year, that will hold them in good stead. And also they've obviously got to find a way to kick goals. If Jesse Hogan can play regular footy this year, that's a big plus because I think he showed some really good signs for them as well. So they're my smoky to win the flag. Finals aspirant will likely be the largest group. So you could pick one from a handful of teams here. I'm just going to say Essendon is a finals aspirant for me. I think they need another year to sort of consolidate the form and the improvement that they showed in 2021. And while I think they're trending the right way, it doesn't necessarily mean they'll jump up again next year. So I think it's going to be a competitive top eight as well. So they may certainly find themselves in that race. But for me, I don't think I can elevate them yet to being an outside chance to win the flag. I've probably given two more years. So next up, we'll keep things pretty simple here. I think we'll go with another rebuilding team. For me, another obvious example of that is Adelaide, who uh, obviously were wooden spooners last year and near that this year. I think they still were in the bottom four, but again, another important draft for them. Again, another year where they need to get games into the kids. So by the same logic as North Melbourne, even though I can certainly see them, you know, pinching a few wins, could they make it as far as the finals? Potentially, potentially. That being said, I still think Adelaide are well and truly still rebuilding. Going to chuck Hawthorne in there as well, mostly just by, you know, the language we've heard around their, their trade period strategy. Obviously, they're looking to get more kids into their list, not necessarily placing a premium, not necessarily placing heap of value on the uh, the older guys in their team as well. So that suggests to me that Mitch was going to come in, try and build the team from the ground up. And that's why I still think they count as a rebuild. That being said, their established talent is still good enough, in my opinion, to, to pinch enough wins to be a potential final smoky. But... I think in terms of their focus this year, finals aspirants probably a little bit too generous. So I'm going to say they're still rebuilding at the moment. Do we lump the Gold Coast Suns in there too? I think we have to, to be honest. I think they're just permanently rebuilding. I think they're, 
hopefully in terms of their goals, they're probably hoping to play finals next year. But I think with still so many young guys on their list that need to sort of develop, it's it's kind of a case where they're torn between the two. They're trying to be gunning for finals, but they're also going to have to rely on a lot of improvement from guys in that 18 to 22 range. So for me, still rebuilding. Richmond is an interesting one for me because obviously they won, you know, three of the previous four flags before Melbourne this year. And then they finished something like 12th this year or something similar to that. So they're an interesting one where on their day, they're obviously up there as good as Melbourne. But when things fall away, like they did with injury this year, then it's hard to really back them. So I'm going to give them outside chance. I still think they're a very, very good chance. They're probably a genuine contender as well, but probably hard to have them ahead of some other teams I've got in there. Collingwood for me is also in a genuine rebuild. I think their best 22 is is reasonably strong, but they often really get crippled by injuries. But not only that, they've invested so much in that sort of 18 to 20 year old gap on their list. And they're going to add a young guy, Nick Dacos, in pick two or three in this year's upcoming draft. And they're probably going to play him from round one and play every game. So I think that's going to be their focus this year. And that's for me, why I still have them in rebuild. We'll nominate the other grand finals as a premiership contender. How can you go past them? To be honest, the Bulldogs are an incredibly strong team. The midfield's one of the strongest on paper up there with Melbourne, that's for sure. Certainly probably bats the deepest in terms of how many good midfielders they They've got. The question mark for me is obviously going to be the forward line structure with Josh Bruce not going to be available um, next year. And Tim O'Brien's been recruited more as a defender, it seems. So there is that question mark. But that being said, look at the form that they produced in the finals up until the grand final, all without Josh Bruce as well. So for me, absolutely still a primary premiership contender. Let's have another look at some finals aspirants. Do we include Carlton in that? They're probably, yeah, I think you have to put them as higher than rebuild, that's for sure. I think they're ready to take that next step. Am I going to put them in my top eight? Almost certainly know at this stage. They've burned me too many times before, but they've obviously consolidated a list weakness with their midfield gig. They're getting guys like George Hewitt and Adam Chera in particular into that midfield. So there's a strong argument for improvement there. I think if you keep Zach Williams and Adam Saad down back, they're probably going to find their own organic improvement as well. Because on paper, it is a very strong backline as well. So for me, finals aspirant, they're certainly above rebuild, but probably still not going to play finals in my opinion. Fremantle, similar boat, finals aspirant. Uh, I think what we saw from this year that you could probably class them as a finals aspirant. They got relatively close. Uh, I think it took until the final round for them to be officially eliminated from the season. But for them, the blow is that they continually lose players every offseason. This year, Adam Chera was a huge loss. They got him with pick five in the 2017 draft, a really critical pick for them. One of their better young midfielders. They're, they're blessed they've got Brayshaw and Sarong and a few others that uh, are actually good young midfielders themselves. So it doesn't break the bank, but obviously if they continue this continual cycle, it makes it hard to improve. So will they improve next year enough to make the final? Finals? Potentially, potentially, but I don't think they're an outside chance and they're certainly not rebuilding anymore. So they're clearly a finals aspirant. St Kilda is another finals aspirant, I reckon. I, I find it hard to really back them in for an outside chance to win the flag. Could they? Probably. I mean, they're probably good enough actually, but I just don't see them as an outside chance, if that makes sense. They're one of a number of teams that missed the finals whose list profile would suggest that they should be higher on the ladder. And I think they had their own issues with injury this year as well. So there's certainly some upside there. Would I be shocked to see them in the finals? Absolutely not. Could I see them fifth? Yeah, potentially. Could I see them in the top four? That's probably a stretch for me, and that's why I've probably only got them as finals aspirant. Rating Geelong is hard. I genuinely don't know. I'll probably say that they're a contender. I'm going to go against the grain there, because I genuinely think people will be looking for reasons to ride off Geelong, and I just don't think you can do it. I don't think you can do it. They look pretty listless towards the end of the season, and yes, most of their players will be coming to the end of their careers. I think it was a factor that they lost Tom Stewart, who was one of, one of their best players this year, if not the best. He had a season-ending injury late in the year, but on top of that, they just you know, looked pretty poor. Maybe they were sick during that prelim. I don't know if I believe it. I think Melbourne would have been the better team comfortably anyway. So either way, you look at Geelong's list profile, I just can't see them. I can't see them not in the top six, to be honest. That's probably as far as I'd put it. Could they win the flag? Absolutely, yes. I think they're more likely to finish top two than they are ninth. Where do I put my beloved West Coast Eagles? Well, I think I'm going to put them there. I think there's somewhere between outside chance and finals aspirant. My optimistic view of the Eagles is that they can shock a few people and finish third or something like that. That's a little bit different to saying they're an outside chance to win the flag though, because I don't know if I see it. I don't know if I see it. And that's trying to be as neutral as possible. I certainly don't think the Eagles are rebuilding. I think another team that suffered with injury and fitness this year and obviously an outdated game plan as well, which I've banged on about all year, but 
For me, I think I'll put them in finals aspirant. I expect the Eagles to make the finals, to be completely honest with you, and I know that will ruffle some feathers. But can they refresh the side enough to go all the way? Probably not. So they're, they're probably in the hunt for the finals. So we've got three teams left that are all pretty good as well. Sydney, Brisbane, and Port Adelaide. I'm more inclined to put Port Adelaide as an outside chance at this current stage. Yes, they did finish second. I think they hit their form at the right time, but obviously we talked about it all year. Their form against the top sides would suggest that they weren't quite on their level, and ultimately they were shown up in the finals when they got absolutely battered by the Bulldogs. Could they win the flag? Yes, absolutely. And that's why they're an outside chance. They're certainly better than final aspirant. Are they a genuine contender? Well, they have made two home prelims in the last couple of years, but in both of those years, I don't know if I ever really felt like they were the best team or that they were a realistic chance of winning the flag. So for me, I know that's a little bit harsh, but I think Port Adelaide are closer to being an outside chance. And I think the Brisbane Lions are closer and they're just a better team. I think they're more of a genuine contender. They're probably the least likely of the four teams I've got there. And now that I look at it, it is a very similar top four to what the actual ladder was this year. So, But it's hard to make the case against Brisbane. We look at their list talent, how many young players they have uh, that are in their prime. They've got Cam Rayner coming back from ACL. Might not make a huge difference just of them by himself. But for me, a clear step up from the likes of GWS, Richmond and Port Adelaide going into next year. That means we have one team left on the board and I've kind of deliberately left Sydney last because I, I find it difficult with them. Did they they look like one of the best teams in the comp at times last year. Absolutely. Can they sustain that into next year? I'm not 100% sure yet. The exciting thing for them is how many of their young players contributed to that improvement and the way they play the game also is exceptionally exciting but I wonder if that leaves them a little bit vulnerable for people sort of looking at what Sydney's doing and they're gonna get targeted a little bit. On top of that, you have to factor in that young kids are not gonna play well every single year. They're gonna be inconsistent. I'm gonna dip Sydney back down to finals aspirant. I think they're the best team comfortably of that group. But for me, I don't realistically consider them an outside chance to win the flag next year. And that's probably one of my more controversial calls. I think a lot of people will bristle the fact that I haven't rated Sydney high enough. For me, I expect them to play finals because if you look at this, how I've got it, you've got the seven teams there in theory are the teams I'm backing to play finals. And then there's one spot left for the rest of these teams and for me it would probably be Sydney if I had to pick one out of those. Just can't see this team winning a flag this year. I think they're just still a little bit too raw and that's why they're not an outside chance. Give it two years though they have some of the best youth in the competition. They could probably be up there alongside you know a Brisbane or a, maybe not a Melbourne because I think they're exceptionally good but maybe a Bulldogs as well. Anyway guys that is my little crack at ranking teams based on general categories going into next year. Obviously it's probably still a little bit conservative. When you look at this you is probably still too similar to how it was this year, which means there's going to be a big shock somewhere. So let me know in the comments where you think A, where I got it wrong, or B, where you think I got it right, or even C, what's the nomination from you? Which teams are going to surprise next year, either positively or negatively? Anyway, guys, really appreciate the support on the channel over the last few months. It's been fantastic. Uh, still got a little bit of juice in the tank as well. So it's still going to be some vids coming up. So I'd appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, because there is plenty more to come. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.